Welcome to Object Intelligence Complete for Cabinet Vision Solid. In these lessons you will complete six exercises that will teach you about the concepts that are used in adding intelligence to parts in Solid. Object Intelligence is simply another way of saying that we will be giving objects instructions about how to resize or reposition themselves as conditions around them change. With the ability to add intelligence to objects in Solid, you will have the potential to create truly custom parts and assemblies. Before we get into the mechanics of adding intelligence to objects, it is important to get an understanding of some background topics that will be used in the exercises. The background topics that we will be discussing in this e-training movie are parameters, specifically the nine basic parameters, the reference point, part orientation, orthographic views, the object tree and navigating through the object tree, and formulas, which are really related to navigating through the object tree. The first background topic that we will discuss will be parameters. First, we're going to cover the nine basic parameters that every object has. Try to think of everything in solid as being an object, whether it is a part, a cabinet, a wall, a door, a room, or whatever. A parameter would be a characteristic that is used to describe that object. As shown in the paragraph on your screen, an example of a parameter would be the length of a part. That is one parameter that tells us one characteristic of that part. We need all nine parameters to know everything that we need to know about that part. The nine basic parameters can be divided into three types of part parameters. First we have the positional parameters. These parameters tell us where that object is in space. The space that the object is in is also an object. However, we don't have to describe the parent object when we are describing the child part. We are simply giving the location of the child within the parent. Think about a map. For example, to describe where a city is, we might just say that it is in the west central part of a state. We already know where that state is because it is described in a map of the United States. We don't have to redraw the whole United States map just to describe where a city is. In solid, a room could be like that map of the United States. Each state is a cabinet. Each city is a part inside that cabinet. To describe where a part is, we just need to identify which cabinet it is in and then where it is inside that cabinet. To summarize, the positional parameters basically tell us the location of our part inside the parent object. The second type of parameter is a size parameter. This is a simple concept. These parameters tell the size of the part that is being described. There's a parameter for width, one for length, and then another parameter for the thickness. Finally, we have the rotational parameters. These parameters will tell us how that part is oriented inside the parent object. This is more like describing a person who is in the city that we talked about in our map example. The rotational parameters would tell if that person is standing up or lying down and whether they are facing north, south, east, or west. The next background topic that we need to cover is the reference point. Another name for the reference point could be the point of origin. All parameters that describe this part use the origin point as a beginning. As shown in this diagram, the reference point is the point where all three axes converge. In normal orientation, the reference point is at the back bottom left corner of the object. As we'll discuss in the next background topic, all parts are natively in this normal orientation and they are rotated into place. That brings us to the third background topic, part orientation. As you see here, we have removed the top rail from the face frame of this cabinet and placed it to the side in normal or native orientation. Now in this slide, we have rotated that top rail back into position. The green arrow points to the location of the reference point when the part has been rotated into position. 
The next background topic that we will cover is orthographic views. There are three orthographic views where you get a different perspective of the object. From the orthographic views, you have access to all of the parts inside the object and are able to edit them individually. Pictured now on your screen is the face orthographic view. I click the highlighted button to enter the plan orthographic view. This is the plan orthographic view. The same parts of the object are visible from this view. In fact, some parts are more easily visible from this view than the other orthographic views. To determine the exact location of a part inside an object, you really need to view that object in all three orthographic views. Now I click on the highlighted button to go to the end orthographic view. This is the end orthographic view. Again, there are some parts that are more easily seen and selected from this view. For example, the cabinet ends are very easily selected from this view. The next background topic that we need to cover is the object tree. You can open the object tree by clicking on the object tree option in the ribbon bar. This works from either the room or assembly level of solid. The object tree now appears on your screen. Because we are accessing the object tree from the assembly level, the assembly is the top level that we will see. If we open the object tree from the room level, we will see that the room is the top level. We would then see the walls, cabinets, and other objects that are in the room. Let's go ahead and discuss the idea of formulas. This topic is really interrelated to the object tree. A formula is simply the plan that you have for assigning intelligence to a particular object or part. There are really only two steps for coming up with a formula. First, work out what you want to do and write it down in plain language. Then, follow that logic through the object tree. Step 1 is probably the hardest step in the process. This is where you develop a plan for the object. Our example here is, I want the length of the new part to be the same as the width of the deck in this cabinet. The deck is an object that already has the intelligence built in. As the overall size of the parent object changes, the size of the deck changes in relation. All that we are doing with this stated plan is using this relationship to add intelligence to the new part. After you have written out your formula in plain language, we need to convert that into a language that SOLID will understand. We do this by following the logic through the object tree to convert the formula into a code that we can add to the parameters of the new part. We could open the object tree from this screen, from the room level, but there is a lot more information that we will have to sift through. We can significantly reduce the amount of extra information if we first go to the assembly level. We'll take this cabinet to the assembly level by right-clicking the cabinet and then selecting Edit. Now at the assembly level, we will click the object tree option in the ribbon bar. This will open the object tree at the assembly level as is shown now on the screen. Let's go ahead and expand the object tree and we'll start by clicking the plus symbol beside standard base cabinet. 